and welcome to today's lesson on moments and balance. So we're going to try and understand the rotational effect forces can have on objects, which links into the GCSE physics unit of the AQA separate science in forces. So in today's lesson, we're going to try and define what a moment is, understand how to calculate the moment on an object, and apply the principle of moments to a real life situation, which links into the following part of the GCSE specification for AQA. So it links into the moments, levers, and gears section, which is a separate science only uh, part of the course. So if you do combine science, this is not on the specification. So in previous lessons, we've looked at the effect of linear forces. So these are forces that make objects accelerate in straight lines. So a linear force will cause this particular object to accelerate in a straight line, and it tends to accelerate by change in speed. Now, a rotational force will cause an object to accelerate in a circular path. So a rotational force will cause this object to accelerate in a circle. Now, a rotational force or a system of rotational forces may cause an object to rotate. And this uh, acceleration is by changing direction, not by changing speed. So if we've looked previously at linear forces causing objects to accelerate in straight lines, and in today's lesson we're going to look at rotational forces, which are forces which cause objects to accelerate in circular path, we've got to consider this concept of moments. Now, what do we mean by moments? How does it link into something called a pivot? And how do you calculate a moment? Well, if we consider the following object, so a, a bar which is fixed at a point X. Now, we can place a force downwards on the object. Now, remember, you always draw your forces on, on an object from the centre of mass of the object if it's a free body diagram. Now, this particular force acts towards the centre of the Earth. It's the weight of the object. Now remember, the weight is the force acting on an object due to gravity, and the force of gravity close to the Earth is due to the gravitational field around the Earth. Now, we can call a fixed point on an object, a point where it's fixed and cannot move, the pivot or the fulcrum. So an example of a pivot or a fulcrum would be where an object is screwed into a wall. Now, in this particular example, point X is going to be the fulcrum or the pivot in this situation. Now, what will happen is, whilst this force is acting vertically downwards, in reality, this particular force will cause the object to rotate, because it's fixed at point X. So, due to being fixed at point X, this linear force will cause a rotational effect. So, we've got now a rotational effect due to the force. So, the resultant force is causing the object to accelerate by changing direction. Now, the effect of a force causing a rotation or return effect is known as the moment of the force. So, in this particular example, due to the object being fixed at point X at its pivot, this particular force is causing a rotational effect, which we will call a moment. Now, we can calculate the moment of a force with the following equation. Moment equals force times by perpendicular distance from the pivot. Now, the perpendicular distance is the distance of a parallel line between the force and the pivot. Now, it's so basically, we can also consider it as the perpendicular distance as the distance of a parallel line between the line of action of a force and the pivot. So the line of action is an imaginary line acting downwards from where the force is. So fundamentally, it's the same idea on this particular diagram, but it's a parallel line distance between the line of action of the force of the force and the pivot. Now remember, in your examination, you always got to use the perpendicular distance. So they can try and trick you in examinations by giving you a couple of distances, and you've got to recognise it's the perpendicular distance that you use in the equation. Now we can put units into this particular equation, and we know force is measured in newtons, and perpendicular distance is measured in metres, so therefore the unit of moment is going to be the unit of the force times by the unit of the distance, so it's going to be newton metres. Now don't confuse the units of moments with the units of spring constant, because they are similar, one is newtons per metre, and one is newton metres, but they are not the same units, so just be careful regarding that. 
Now, moments are vectors as they make an object rotate. So the moment acts in a particular direction. You also can no notice that the moment is a vector because it contains one vector term in its equation, force. So as a result, if a, if a quantity contains one vector term in its equation, it itself will be a vector. Now, when calculating moments, that means you should state the direction it causes the rotation in. So either clockwise or anticlockwise, because it is, a mo it is a vector, so it has a direction attached to it. Now, this equation, moment equals force times by perpendicular distance from the pivot, has to be memorized for your examination. You've got to learn it off by heart. So, just to clarify, to summarize what we've learned so far. The effect of a force causing an object to rotate is called the moment. Now, another name you might hear for moment in the real world is torque. So, for example, the torque of a wheel of a car. That is just another word for moment. Now, the point in which an object rotates about, because it's fixed at, is called the pivot or the fulcrum. And we can calculate the moment with the equation moment equals force times by perpendicular distance from the pivot. So, let's look at an example. So in this particular question, it says Fred weighs 500 newtons, so has a force of 500 newtons, and stands on one end of the seesaw. He is 0.5 metres from the pivot. So what moment does he exert on the seesaw? So you do moment equals force times by distance. So you do 500 times by 0.5. So 500 times by 0.5 is 250. Add your units in, newton metres, and then add your direction in, because the moment is a vector, so it's 250 newton metres anti-clockwise. Now, we can get objects which rotate about a pivot to actually balance. Now, the physics behind getting an object to balance is called the principle of moments. So let's consider the following object which is balanced on this pivot. Now, you'll notice that because this object is fixed at the pivot, that these forces will cause a rotational effect, like we looked at previously. So these forces produce moments on either side of the pivot. Now, as I said before, that's because the object is fixed at the pivot. Now, when an object balances, the moments equal each other on either side of the pivot. This means that the moments will cancel each other out. Okay, so the rotation that they produce are in opposite directions, that's why it's crucial to remember that moments are vectors. Now, mathematically, you can think of it that one moment is a positive value and one moment is a negative value. So, like plus 20 and minus 20, they would cancel out to equal zero. So, this means that there's no resultant moment. So, when an object is balanced, like it is here, when the moments cancel out, when there is no resultant moment, we say it is in equilibrium. Now, for an object to be truly in equilibrium, there must be no resultant moment or no or resultant force. So this means for no resultant moment, the moments on each side of the pivot have to cancel, but it means that the forces up and the forces down on the object have to cancel as well if it wants to be truly in equilibrium. So we'll leave the idea of the forces balancing out uh, because that's more of an A-level concept, but let's just focus on the moments at this point. So the left-hand rotational effect and the right-hand rotational effect will have to equal each other, they'll have to balance each other, they'll have to cancel each other out, so that means that the anti-clockwise moment will equal the clockwise moment about the pivot. Now we can then now go back to our equation for moments and link it in like that. So we know that a moment is equal to force times by perpendicular distance. So if anti-clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment, that means that force times by distance of the anti-clockwise moment equals force times by distance of the clockwise moment. So we can write it out like this, that the sum of the moments clockwise about a pivot is equal to the sum of the moments anti-clockwise about a pivot if the object is in equilibrium or the object is balanced, and we can also write it in terms of the moment equation that the force clockwise times by the distance clockwise equals the force anticlockwise times by the distance anticlockwise. That is the principle of moments. Now, we can 
Also, just to look at a few key aspects of this. Now, firstly, if there's more than one force on a side of a pivot, which is causing a particular moment, you've then what you've got to do is you've got to group your forces into the forces that are causing a clockwise moment and the forces causing an anti-clockwise moment and then balance it out. So in this particular example, force 2 and force 3 are both causing clockwise moments. So to work out the total clockwise moment, you work out the clockwise moment due to force 2. So do force 2 times by distance 2, the, dis the perpendicular distance from the pivot. And then you work out the clockwise moment caused by force 3, which is force 3 times by distance 3. You then sum the two. You add the two together to get the total clockwise moment. But still remember that if the object is balanced, that means the clockwise moment must equal the anti-clockwise moment. So, how do you solve a problem involving moments and the principle of moments? Well, step one, you work out the moment on the side of the pivot you are given in the question the force and the distance for. Then you state the moment on either side of the pivot is the same, and therefore you can work out your unknown value in your question as you'll know the, mo the total moment on one side of the pivot and you'll be given the other value, either the force or the distance that you have been in the questions, so you can work out the corresponding value. So here's an example of a question. So here in this question, it tells you that you've got one force causing a clockwise moment of 10 newtons, and it's got, it's a, it's got a perpendicular distance of 4 metres from the pivot, and then you've got a, a force causing an anti-clockwise moment, which you don't know, you need to work out, okay, which is 6 meters from the pivot. So how can you work out the force causing the clockwise moment? Well you write out the equation. Now remember if an object is balanced like it is in this particular situation force times by distance causing the anti-clockwise moment equals the force times by distance causing the clockwise moment. So you do force 1 times by distance 1 equals force 2 times by distance 2. What you then do is you put the values into the equation first because you actually get marked in the examination for showing that you know what the values link to in the equation. So you just substitute values into the equation will gain you a mark. So you then place the values into the equation. You then rearrange the values where needed. Now firstly, you can say 10 times by 4 is equal to 40. So if f times by 6 equals 40, well, f will equal 40 divided by 6. So the answer is 6.7 newtons. Now, you should always give the answer with a unit. And we know force is measured in newtons, so we know that 1 is newtons. And then you've also got to give it to the same number of significant figures that are given in the question. Now, you'll notice that all three values are given to two significant figures, so you give your answer to two significant figures. Now, last thing you can do, just to check, does your answer look right? Well, if you notice, right, the particular, it's always a force times by a distance has to equal out. Now, if you look on the right-hand side, the force that causes the clockwise moment, it is actually closer to the pivot than the force on the left-hand side, the force causing the anti-clockwise moment. So to get the same value, if the distance is smaller, the force is going to have to be bigger. So for your, your answer you're calculating, if the distance is bigger, the force is going to be smaller. So the answer that you calculate in your question should be less than 10. And guess what? It is. So it looks like it's the right answer. Now here's another example of a question. This time we've been given, we've been given the forces on each side of the pivot and we need to work out one of the distances. So we say again, because the, the object is balanced on the pivot, force times by distance causing the anti-clockwise moment equals force times by distance causing the clockwise moment. So we then pop our values into the, um, into the equation as such. Okay, what we then do is we then uh, simplify where we can do. So 10 times by 3 equals 
it's 30. So we then say, well, if distance times by 15 equals 30, well, then distance is equal to 30 over 15. So distance equals 2.0 meters. Now, once again, let's just check a few things. Have we given a unit? Well, yes, distance is in meters. How we give it to the right number significant figures? Well, each value, 15, 10, and 3.0, are given to two significant figures. So we give our answer to two significant figures. And then finally, we look to see if it looks about right. Now, compared to the right-hand side, the left-hand side's force okay, is larger. That means its distance needs to be smaller to get the same value across. So are we smaller than 3 metres? We are smaller than 3 metres. We're at 2 metres, so it looks like it's correct. So to summarise what we've learned in this particular lesson, the turn and effect of a force is called the moment of the force, and the force or system of forces can possibly cause an object to rotate if it's fixed about a point. Now the size of a moment is defined by the equation moment equals force times by perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line of action to the force. Moment is in newton meters, force is in newtons, and distance is in meters. And if an object is balanced, the total clockwise moment about the pivot equals the total anti-clockwise moment about that pivot. So if we've learned in today's lesson, we can define what a moment is, understand how to calculate the moment on an object, and apply the principles of moments to a real-life situation. Thank you very, very much for listening to this today's lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it and have a lovely day.